Hey folks, Ray from DCRamerica.com here. I'm here at CES 2019, or more accurately, the alley behind Harrah's and something else before 2019 CES. Uh, but the, the show is kind of starting, in particular, Garmin's kicked off with the announcement of the Vivo Active 3 Music Verizon. That's technically called Vivo Active 3 Music Verizon, but basically the rest of the world will call it Vivo Active 3 Music Cellular or LTE, whatever you want. The point is that it has cellular in it, which is basically Garmin's first product to introduce cellular capabilities into one of their watches. Uh, and it's probably no surprise they did it with sort of the mid-range watch as opposed to something like a Phoenix 5 or whatnot, um, just because that has the most appeal. And that's probably going to be important when you understand some of the limitations around who it's going to be available to, in particular, just the US market right now and just Verizon customers. Uh, so what the way it works, it's got a couple of new features on it. Uh, number one, the obvious one is cellular connectivity. But with that, you can download music to it over cellular connectivity, as well as a new distress feature that allows you to send out emergency alerts uh, in the event something goes wrong. And so I'm going to kind of show you that and walk you through how that works uh, on the unit here itself. And then we're going to go ahead and save the music features for Tuesday. And the reason why is that uh, some of the music pieces, in particular Spotify, is still beta on the Vivo Actor 3 entirely. And this particular watch that was just flown in half an hour ago does not have the app on it, but the ones coming on Tuesday do. Uh, so that's the way CES works, folks. Uh, but it's all right. I'm going to show you the, the features there. And to be honest, the music features just work like music features. Uh, one caveat on the music features to be aware of is that you can't live stream a playlist. So for example, if you go into Spotify and choose your playlist du jour, you can't just press play and have that play as you're running out middle of nowhere. You have to download that playlist first. So the exact same way you would download it at home on Wi-Fi, you have to do that um, over cellular, which you can do over cellular, but it is sort of a limitation there. Um, and it sounds like that's probably because of the fact that in the past, or up until this point anyways, uh, that was just the way the apps worked on Garmin's devices in terms of downloading that content ahead of time. Uh, so that app architecture has to change a little bit, and that'll probably take a little bit of time. Uh, still, it's, it's great if you're not near Wi-Fi, if you're traveling, for example, you can't uh, connect to a hotel Wi-Fi network, as here in Las Vegas. Uh, that actually makes it quite appealing. So let's dive into the uh, distress piece, the personal beacon piece, uh, and show you that first. Okay, so here we are on the watch face itself. Now to go ahead and send that locator beacon, that signal, uh, personal distress message, you're gonna simply hold this button down on the side here, and you keep on holding. There's only one button, so it's pretty straightforward. I'm gonna go past the menu, just keep on holding down, and then right there you'll see it goes into this kind of countdown for five seconds, or you can press send now right then and there, and that sends it to your predefined contacts. Now in this phone here, it has a separate phone number from this device, which has its own phone number, uh, has a non-removal SIM in it, uh, and then you can see right there, it just came in. Uh, now that phone number, in case you're wondering, is not the person, it's not even this device here, that's just a general cloud service provider phone number from Amazon or Azure or whatnot, uh, so don't worry, I'm not sharing this phone number. And what you can see here though, on this one, if we kind of pull this in, is that it lists the person has triggered an assistance alert, um, your listed emergency contact, and if I click the alert location right there, <clears throat> the GPS coordinates are listed as well. And then you'll see here in a second, uh, the exact location of where we are in this somewhat sketchy alley, uh, right there in between those two casinos of Venetia and the Harris, and that's, that's where we are. So back on the device here though, we need to end this because right now it's still broadcasting my location. So I click this little button up there, and it says this location is going to continue to be tracked until you end it. So I'm going to click on end right there. And then I have two options to simply end it or to say end and send the person, basically send your contacts an I'm okay message. Um, so obviously you'd probably want to do the second one because the first one basically means you died or something. So the second one gives those people, your friends, a little bit of comfort that you might still be alive. And you can see right there, we just got the message again. Um, also, again, this is not someone's phone number, just a cloud service provider sending that phone. It changes every single time. Every single test we've done, it's a different phone number, so uh, that's just in case you're wondering. So next, to run through a little bit of the text messaging piece. To get to that, we're gonna go and just uh, press the button there to wake up the watch, there we go. And then swipe to the right, and you can see here the phone number, or the phone name for Matt Bates. So in this case, I can go ahead and reply to him, which will be this watch right there. Click on reply. Now I can choose from some quick messages right there. So I can just say, uh, we're working out right now. <coughs> Click on send. And then in just a moment, we should see it right there. So that was super quick. Uh, you can see it just came in. Uh, in this case, the phone number we did change to Vivo Active 3 Music LTE because this will show the phone number of this device. You can see working out. If I send back a message, it simply says great. There we go. We'll see that show up over here in just a moment, hopefully. 
Okay, so there we go, the message came in. Uh, it took a little while, about 30 seconds or so. It has seemed to vary on some of the different tests here. Some of them have been a lot quicker, some a little bit longer. Uh, it's plausible that doing this test on top of a giant electrical box may be impacting things, but maybe not. Um, click on reply again, I can choose, you know, some emojis and whatnot. Uh, so kind of cool, pretty uh, pretty clean interface here. Send the little runner icon back and that should pop over there uh, almost instantly from here to there. So uh, I'm not really sure why the delays, but again, this is a device that they're still kind of working out some of the kinks and expect, you know, it's not gonna be released until sometime uh, later on this quarter. Okay, so there you go, just your first look at the new cellular functionality on the Vivacta 3 Music Cellular. Um, now keep in mind, there's no pricing set yet um, and availability is kind of a nebulous Q1 sort of thing. So that's, my guess is probably more later Q1 than earlier Q1, uh, but we'll see about that. It'll be available at Verizon stores and Verizon authorized retailers and potentially some other places beyond that. But uh, for now, it's, it's basically Verizon. And Garmin has said they don't really have any um, announceable plans for anything else beyond Verizon. So they're not sharing the details if we'll see it in other countries, for example, or with other carriers. Uh, though I've got to believe eventually we'll see that. But keep in mind, when you do stuff like this, like watches where you have embedded SIMs inside the device, it's much more difficult to get that into other carriers. In the case of Apple, for example, with the Apple Watch, they can essentially strong arm other carriers around the world and doing whatever the heck they want because they're Apple. Uh, for a company like Garmin, that's going to be much more difficult to convince carriers to carry the devices and all the complexity that comes along with a device like this. In terms of data plans, it's going to use Verizon's connected device data plans. You can go online right now and just Google Verizon connected device and you'll find that uh, basically starting off at different data tiers like two, four, etc. Uh, it does cost a fair bit of money. I looked in some of the plans like 20 bucks a month. So this will add up quite a bit. Um, now, for those of you who want that, like that connected distress sort of functionality, this probably makes a lot of sense. If you're looking at it just for music though, that's probably a tougher pitch because of the fact that you can't actually stream that music all the time. So you're kind of back to downloading music. Thus, if you are just primarily downloading music at home, it's probably not gonna save you a lot. Whereas if you travel a ton like I do, then that's actually awesome because I could download music in places like hotels here that I couldn't otherwise do. Anyway, stay tuned on Tuesday for that music piece uh, once I have a chance to get it on a watch that has the app on it and all that kind of goodness, as well as plenty of other sports technology stuff here from CES 2019 in Las Vegas. If you found this interesting, whack that like button at the bottom there or the subscribe button. I appreciate it. Have a good one.